Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be recapping The Shape of Water, a 2017 fantasy movie set in the 1960s. The film begins with a woman named Eliza who is completely mute. She heads to her neighbor's apartment and spends some time with Giles, a somewhat older man who she often visits. Soon after, she leaves and takes a bus to get to her janitor job at an aerospace research center. She arrives inside and runs into her friend Zelda Fuller, who lightly scolds her for being late. They check in and she begins to work scrubbing gum off the floor and doing other janitorial work. Inside a classified area, a Mr. Fleming gathers the group and announces a new team and asset are arriving shortly. He introduces a new doctor named Robert and states the asset is the most sensitive to ever be housed in the facility. Before he's finished, a door opens and a group of workers roll in a large vessel. Behind them stands an ominous looking man in a black suit. He surveys the area then begins to question Mr. Fleming about the security of the location. Eliza manages to get close to the vessel and curiously looks into the bubbling water. She hears amphibian-like noises coming from inside, and suddenly something bangs against the glass, scaring her and the workers. The doctors order for them to be taken out of the room, and Eliza gets one last look at the cylinder as she is ushered away. The next day, Eliza returns back to work for another night shift. While cleaning the bathroom, the man in the suit walks in. He urges them to continue on and sets down a black baton. Eliza goes to move it, and he warns her, saying, Look, don't touch, as the baton is actually a high voltage cattle prod. The man introduces himself to the ladies. His name is Strickland and he's the new head of security. He leaves without washing his hands and Eliza notices a small blood stain where his weapon had been. Later, back in the hallway, Eliza and Zelda are emptying the trash when they hear a set of loud screams. A door opens and out in the hall runs Strickland. He falls to the ground holding his hand and two fingers are missing. Others rush to help him and the ladies quickly leave the area. Soon after, they're called to the lab to clean the blood and see the fingers on the ground, which they bag and send away. Eliza approaches the cylinder tank and gets her first look at the mysterious creature imprisoned inside. She is fascinated and can't look away from the fish-like creature until Mr. Fleming returns. Over the next few days, Eliza begins to sneak into the lab to visit the prisoner. She brings her lunch to share with it and comes face to face with the chained fish-like creature. It aggressively screams at her, but Eliza is not scared and leaves a hard-boiled egg on the ledge. The creature finally grabs the egg and dives back into the water. Her friend questions what she is doing in there, but she brushes it off, saying she was cleaning. Later that day, they're called in and questioned by Strickland, and he thanks them for finding his fingers. He notices scars on Eliza's neck, and we learn because of this, she was unable to talk since she was a baby. Strickland tells them the creature is filthy and disgusting, and was dragged here from the rivers in South America. He says, it may look human, but it was not created in the image of the Lord, so it is not human. Zelda says, she doesn't know what the Lord looks like, and Strickland racistly says, he looks like me, maybe a little like you, but more like me. The ladies soon leave, and we flash to the creature, and learn he is able to replicate the sign language he saw from Eliza. The next day, Eliza returns to the lab to see the creature. She sneaks in music to play for it, and brings more food. It appears out of the water, and attempts to speak to Eliza, replicating her sign language. Days go by, and Eliza becomes more fixated by the creature, daydreaming about it while at home. She brings more and more food and music, and her mood seems to change, each day becoming happier. One day, she is dancing outside the tank and comes face to face with the creature. She is so transfixed that she does not notice the new doctor, Robert Hofstelter, watching her in amazement. We come to find out that the doctor is actually a Soviet Union spy named Dmitri. He meets with his bosses and tells them he believes the monster is actually intelligent and can communicate. The bosses plan to poison the creature as soon as possible to prevent American research, but Dmitri is hesitant. The next time, Eliza visits the lab, she finds the creature chained and out of the water. She rushes to him and notices cuts and blood all over his body and an electrified baton to the side. Seconds later, the door opens and she darts out of sight as Strickland enters. Now hiding, she sees him terrorize and torture the creature nonstop. Soon after, General Hoyt, Strickland's boss, enters the lab. The two talk about the creature and we learn they want to dissect it to help create space travel technology. A worried Eliza later visits her neighbor, Giles, and begs him to help break the creature out before he is killed. She says her and the creature are alike and believe they were made for each other. Giles refuses and rushes out of the apartment. Giles has trouble at his work and heads to the pie shop. He's romantically interested in the boy work and reaches out to touch his hand. The boy reacts angrily and confused and tells him to get out of the shop and not come back. Now crushed, Giles returns to Eliza and says she is his only friend and he is willing to help with her plan. He creates a fake ID and paints his van using his art skills. Eliza 
Amanda develops a plan to sneak the creature out during a shift at work. She says she will move all the cameras and leave the creature in a laundry hamper. Giles will have five minutes to load it up and escape. Back at work, Strickland intentionally spills some water in front of Eliza, making her mop it up. He states he can't stop thinking about her and asks how mute she really is. He grabs his hand and says he doesn't mind the scars and tries to advance on her. She runs out of the room before things escalate, clearly shaken and upset. Eliza's plan is set for that night and at the same time the Russian doctor is preparing to poison the creature. Eliza moves all the cameras facing the tank and the doctor notices and realizes what is happening. She begins to unchain the creature and he walks in but doesn't stop her. Instead he places the keys in her hand. Zelda notices Eliza is missing and begins to understand what is taking place. The Russian doctor begins to assist Eliza and destroys the power in the facility using a small bomb. Giles approaches in a large laundry van and gets stopped by the guards. Strickland becomes suspicious and rushes to the loading dock with his weapon. The guard draws his gun on Giles and the doctor jumps in to tranquilize him. Eliza is confronted by Zelda who tries to stop her but finally caves and helps her push the basket. They load the amphibian in the van and they drive off before crashing into a parked car. As they speed away, Strickland and the armed guards fire into the van, barely missing Eliza. Back at the apartment, they quickly usher the creature into a bathtub to save him. Once situated, Eliza returns to work the next day and pretends to know nothing. Back at the apartment, Giles falls asleep and the creature walks out of the bathroom. It eats Giles' cat, then runs away when confronted, scratching Giles on the way out. Eliza returns home and immediately searches for the lost creature. She finds it in the theater below and brings it back to the apartment. To apologize, the creature heals Giles' cuts and restores the hair on his head. Meanwhile, General Hoyt visits the facility and scolds Strickland for losing the beast. He gives him 36 hours to retrieve it. Dimitri, the doctor, tries to lie to his bosses that he killed the creature, but they realize he is lying. They spare him for now, but say he will return to Russia. Back at the apartment, Eliza grows closer to the creature and they swim together and embrace. She teaches it language and they dance together. She even floods the home for it. Now determined to retrieve the asset, Strickland follows Dimitri to his meet with his Russian bosses. They shoot him repeatedly, but before finishing him, Strickland comes and kills them both. He then interrogates Dimitri for the names of the strike team which stole the asset. Dimitri caves, saying, no names, they only clean. Strickland heads to Zelda's home to interrogate her, but she doesn't talk. However, her husband confesses and says Eliza has the creature. Strickland leaves and Zelda calls Eliza to warn her. Eliza and Giles rush to a canal to release the creature, but Strickland shows up. He punches Giles, then shoots Eliza and the creature. He thinks he's won, but is smacked by Giles and the monster heals himself and Eliza. Strickland is finally impressed and calls it a god and the creature kills him. At that moment, the police arrive and the acid takes Eliza into the water. It kisses her and uses its power to give her gills where her scars were. The two hold each other and the film ends with the creature saying the two of them could finally be together.